What's up, everyone? This is Steve with the MMA Minute, and today we are breaking down UFC Vegas 89 going down tonight. I'll give you my full card picks and predictions. I'll let you know which fights are worth watching and honestly, which fights are hot garbage that you can skip. A couple things about the card. We are back in the apex, meaning there is no live crowd and we are in a smaller octagon, which typically favors wrestlers and high pressure fighters. Prelims start at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and the main card starts at 10. We have 13 total fights, so let's get into it. I am going to work from the bottom to the top. The first fight of the night, we have Muhammad Usman taking on Mick Parkin, and this is going to be your first skip of the night. You do not need to tune into this fight. Yes, it's heavyweights. Yes, we usually see finishes in these types of fights, but it's not going to happen here. You have two lower-level guys who are not dangerous finishers. Muhammad Usman, you probably know the Usman name. He is the lesser known guy, the lesser good Usman brother. He's a jacked up wrestler who's honestly not that good at wrestling on the feet. He is huge, but he doesn't really have that big one shot knockout power that you'd like to see. And he's honestly not very technical. He's low volume and he's taking on Mick Parkin, another guy who's probably going to try to mix in the wrestling here. And on the feet, it's pretty sloppy. You're probably not going to see a finish coming out of him. So this is a skip for me, but ultimately I am going to back Mick Parkin. He should be better slightly everywhere in this fight, the slightly better striker, the slightly better wrestler, and I'm going to take him to win by decision. The next fight on the card, we have Igor Severino taking on Andre Lima. You do not want to miss this fight. In terms of star power, it's not there because both of these guys are making their UFC debuts. But I guarantee you, if you are looking for a back and forth war, this is going to be your fight because both of these guys are big time finishers. Igor Severino has a 100% finish rate, getting it done on the feet and on the mat. He is very dangerous fights out of shoot the box. And then Andre Lima has an extensive kickboxing background. He is 7-0 with five knockouts or TKOs on his record. Again, you're not going to want to miss this one. Igor is a highly aggressive type of fighter. He is going to march forward. Usually these type of shoot the box guys, they are kill or be killed, but he seems to be a little bit more measured. But when he smells blood, he goes for it. Andre Lima on the other side, he is dangerous, but he's more technical. He's going to be more patient, more calculated. So for those reasons, the defensive side seems to be on Lima. So I am going to take him to win this fight. And I do think he is going to get it done by decision. But don't be surprised if either guy puts the other one out because these guys are very dangerous, as I said. Next fight on the card, Montserrat Rendon taking on Daria Zelesnikova. This is probably one you can skip. Montserrat Rendon, she is 35 years old. She is only 6-0 professionally. That is a very low amount of fights, and she has zero finishes. That is a terrible look, especially when you're 35 years old and you only have one fight in the UFC so far. So. Daria, on the other hand, she's going to have a massive striking advantage. I wouldn't be surprised if she got the job done inside the distance, finding a round two, maybe round three knockout. But her ground game is terrible, and Rendon actually has decent grappling. So this has the potential to be a very boring fight if Rendon overwhelms Daria on the ground. But if it's Daria winning this fight, she's going to be dominating on the feet. And that's who I am going to lean with here. You probably can skip this fight, but I will take Daria to win. And I'll even say she finds a round three knockout. Not a, this is, you'll see this as a common theme. It's very back and forth. The lines are very close on a lot of these fights. So it's, it's low confidence pretty much all the way throughout this card. Next up, we have Jarno Aaron's taking on Steven Wynn. You know, this one has some sort of potential. I'm not going to say it's a full skip, but I'm not saying that you have to really tune in and be 100% laser focused because Aaron's 0-2 in the UFC so far. He's gone to decision both times. He has thrown 20 significant strikes in the first fight and then 30 significant strikes in the second fight. That is extremely low volume. I don't think he's really a big finisher, at least at the UFC level, but he is taking on Steven Wynn, who has fought on Dana White's Contender Series three times and in each of those three fights he's basically landing a hundred significant strikes which is a very high volume type of guy so i think he has the potential to make this an exciting fight i do not like backing jarno Aarons. 
His ground game is pretty terrible. He can be taken down. He can be controlled. So it's going to be Steven win for me all day just based on volume, and I expect this fight to take place on the feet. Do I think it's really going to be a back-and-forth war? I don't, but I will take Steven win to win this fight. Maybe gets the knockout, but I'm going to lean towards decision for me. Next fight, we have Cody Gibson taking on Miles Johns. I think this one actually is going to be a decent scrap. You have Miles Johns. It's an interesting case because in his last fight out, he looked great. But then he got popped for showing a trace of steroids. And then he gets suspended. The last fight gets overturned. U USAD is out of the picture now. I don't know if you guys knew that. But as of January 1st, I think it was of this year, USADA is out of the picture. But there is still some sort of a drug screening process. I just don't know if there's any rule changes or any standards changes that might affect Miles Johns here because if he is off the steroids, the cardio is not going to be there. And Cody Gibson has cardio for days. He will come forward. He will throw a massive amount of volume. We saw in his last fight, he eclipsed over 150 significant strikes. So Miles Johns, known for being more of a wrestler, but he kind of fell in love with his hands for a little while. So he does have some big power, at least early on. I think this is going to be a decent scrap. And I think Cody Gibson as the underdog actually makes a lot of sense. I think the late round finish is going to be in play, but I will take him to win by decision. Next fight, we have Ricardo Hamos taking on Juicy J. Julian Arosa. Do not skip this fight. You have somewhat of the star potential. You don't have UFC debut guys. You don't have top five contenders here. You have some middle of the road, but that show fringe 15 potential. This is going to be a very fun fight because both guys are very dangerous, but when they're losing, they're also getting finished. So on the Hamo side, he's going to be the guy that's more dangerous early on. On the feet, he is flashy, he is dynamic, but he can mix in the takedowns and his grappling is pretty solid as well. Definitely has some submission upside. You see that seven submissions on his professional record. And then Juicy J, very much a liability early on. We, we've seen him now finished in back-to-back -back fights in rounds one. But if he battles through, we've seen it before, he has taken on adversity. If you do not finish him early, he is going to keep marching forward. You see 11 knockouts and 12 submissions. He is very well-rounded. He is very dangerous. I'm very excited for this fight. I am going to take the underdog in Julian Arosa to take over as the fight goes on. And I think he's going to get it done. Most likely in the later rounds, I'll go with a round two submission. Next fight, we have Kurt Hollibaugh taking on Trey Ogden. I you don't you could probably skip this one. You could probably skip this one. Trey Ogden never really shows massive flashes of, of danger. I mean, he's got 11 submissions on record, but he's got no pop in his hands. He has zero wins by knockout or TKO. The takedowns are pretty terrible. I think he has a 16% takedown. Uh, accuracy, which is very low, but when he is able to get it to the ground, he is dangerous. He does have 11 submissions, but Kurt Hollibaugh also very good on the ground. You're seeing 10 submissions out of him as well. So I think it's an interesting matchup. It's more of a, a chess matchup. It's probably going to play out a little bit slower. Ogden is very defensive, very technical, but Hollibaugh is, is going to be the one marching forward, going to be more aggressive, going to probably be landing more dangerous shots, more damage, and looking for that finish. So it has the potential to be a decent fight. I'm not all that excited. But again, this is another spot where I'm going with the underdog in Kurt Hollibaugh. And I think he is going to win by decision. Next fight, we have Fernando Padilla taking on Luis Pajuelo. This is a great fight. You do not want to miss this one. You do have Luis Pajuelo, who is making his UFC debut, taking on Fernando Padilla, who has a couple of fights in the UFC now. And both guys are very dangerous. You are seeing seven out of eight wins out of Pajuelo by finish. And then on the other side with Padilla, uh, 12 out of 15 fights by finish. Padilla is massive for featherweight. He's like six foot one. He has a massive reach. And in this spot specifically, I think he's going to have a six or seven inch reach advantage. But Luis Pajuelo is a guy who he, he is from Peru. Usually these guys have pretty decent cardio, but their striking is on point. He has good head movement, good footwork. The boxing is going to be there. So I think he's going to be looking to get inside the range of Padilla. And if he's able to do that, he may have some success. But Padilla, 
as I said, massive reach advantage, and he actually does really good work inside the clinch as well. So I think this one is going to be very closely lined. A lot of people have Pajuelo as the underdog, but I am going to be taking the favorite here in Padilla to get the job done by round three knockout. We have seen Pajuelo fade a little bit as the fight gets into round three. So Padilla has cardio for days. Give me a round three knockout. Next fight, we have Billy Q taking on Yusuf Zalal. This is going to be action-packed because you have Billy Q who just refuses to be in boring fights. All he knows is one button, and that is go. He just marches forward. He lands eight significant strikes landed per minute. That is an insanely high clip. He has cardio for days. He is just going to be marching forward nonstop. And he is taking on Yusuf Zalal, who is making kind of his UFC re-debut because he had one stint in the UFC, ended up getting cut picked up some regional scene wins. Now he's back in the UFC. He is a good fighter, not the most exciting by any means. He doesn't have massive one-shot knockout power. He doesn't have an insanely good grappling game, but it, it, he is well-rounded. He he does have good cardio. I think this is actually going to be a very close fight. But Billy Q, as I mentioned, I mean, he's just going to be more busy. I think he has the finishing upside here. And with that cardio, I mean, you, the guy just doesn't stop. I love Billy Q. He is always worth tuning into, so make sure to check out this fight. I'm going to go with Billy Q to get the job done, and I think he is going to get it done by decision because it will be tough to break Zalal. Usually Billy Q can break guys down and get the, the late round finish in two or three, but in this case, seems like decision is going to be likely. Next fight, Peyton Talbot taking on Cameron Simon. Do not miss this fight. These are two very young prospects that are very solid prospects at least with Simon, we've seen him in the UFC multiple times now. He's only 23 years old. I think we know the ceiling for this guy is pretty high. Peyton Talbot, on the other hand, just made his UFC debut. He is a Dana White's contender series guy as well. So people basically have him pegged as the next Sean O'Malley. He is tall. He is lanky. He is a very good striker, especially at range. He seems to have very good cardio. Might drop round one, but he'll pick it up in rounds two and rounds three. Pretty decent finishing upside as well. Uh, this is going to be a very close fight. The line suggests that this is almost a pick -em. I believe Talbot, the money has been going slightly into his favor, but I think it's because of the hype of this guy. You cannot count out Cameron Simon, and I especially think he's going to probably have a slight offensive wrestling edge here. So if he decides to wrestle, I think he's going to have a slight edge there, but Peyton Talbot Shows to have good defensive grappling, so I think that'll be interesting. But on the feet, Peyton Talbot will be the bigger guy. He will have a slight reach advantage, and I think he's going to hit just a little bit harder. So don't miss this fight, but I am going to take Peyton Talbot to get the job done by decision, and that decision prop is coming in over plus 200, so that's a decent look as well. Next fight, Edmund Shabazian taking on AJ Dobson. The reason that you don't want to miss this fight is because Edmund Shabazian was someone that the UFC pegged as the next guy up. He had a massive following, a big hype train because he had ties with Ronda Rousey. And the UFC tried to push this guy after he got three or four round one finishes. And it did not go well after he faced, you know, Derek Brunson, Nazardine Imovov, Anthony Fluffy Hernandez. They gave him massive names. They tried to push him to the top. It didn't work out. He's getting a big step down in competition here against AJ Dobson, who is well-rounded, doesn't push an insane pace, but he's got decent striking. He's got decent wrestling that he's he's willing to mix in there, and the durability seems to be there. And that can be a recipe to beat Edmund Shabazian because his cardio has failed him time and time again. So if he has not made adjustments, if he does not slow this fight down, I'm talking about Edmund, then he very well could lose this fight. But he does show flashes of brilliance. He's minus 200. He could easily get the round one finish. I'm hoping he's going to slow it down. I'm going to take him to win this fight. You got to hit the pause button. You cannot trust Edmund Shabazian. I'm going to say decision, which is not his usual method of victory, but I think he's going to make some changes. He's still young. I trust in the process. Next fight, I believe this is the co-main event. You have Carl Williams taking on Justin Taffa. This has the potential to be a very boring fight because Carl Williams is a wrestler. He averages four takedowns per 15 minutes. That is a very high clip, especially at heavyweight, but he is undersized for the division. And in his last fight against Chase Sherman, who is not UFC level, who is not in the UFC anymore, he was only one of 10 on his takedowns. The striking, 
actually surprised us. That's how he won the fight, was actually winning on the feet, which is good to see. But overall, he's going to be looking to take this fight to the ground because Justin Taffa is your classic heavyweight banger with that one-shot knockout power. So we don't really want to see Carl Williams win here because it is going to be a boring decision type of fight. I am going to back Justin Taffa, who is coming off of three straight round one knockouts. I think he does it again. Give me Justin Taffa, round one knockout. And that takes us to the main event here. You have the return of Thug Rose, one of the greatest women's fighters of all time, fighting Amanda Hebus in what I believe is her first main event. I'm not entirely sure, but I don't think she has ever gone five rounds before. So Amanda Hebus right now is the slightly bigger underdog on this card. I think she actually may be the biggest underdog on this card, plus 200. Rose Nama Yunus is coming in as a pretty big favorite. Um, she, I saw her balloon up as far as minus 250. It is coming back down, leveling out a little bit. But you have Thug Rose, championship level experience for days, five-round experience for days. As I said, she is one of the greatest women's fighters of all time, but she can't be trusted. You never know what Rose you're going to get. And sometimes she shows up and she head kick knocks out Zhang Wei Li in a title fight. And then the next fight out, she'll go against Carla Esparza. Five rounds, we'll throw 30 significant strikes. We'll just be frozen like a statue. You never know what you're going to get. Last time out, she did move up to 125. She almost beat Manon Faro, who's one of the best strikers in the division. She actually outlanded her in that fight, and it turned out she had a broken hand or a broken finger. So you kind of give her a pass. Amanda Hebus, on the other hand, you never really thought that she was championship level, but she does belong in that top 10 conversation. She has... Decent striking. It can be a little sloppy at times. It can be a little over aggressive at times, but she can set a pretty good pace. She can mix in the wrestling. She has pretty good grappling and submissions. Cardio, we're not really sure, but the one big knock on Amanda Hebus is that she cannot take a punch. She has a glass chin. We've seen her get knocked down and finished multiple times in the UFC, not just at 125, but also down at 115. That concerns me here. I have to go with Rose Namajunas. If she shows up, if she is in a good headspace, I think she is alive to find that knockout. I am going to take Rose to win this fight and give me a round four knockout. That is every single fight on the card. That's the show, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Good luck with your bets this weekend, and we will see you next week.